Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel once again. I am Jason and this is Old Car Auto Guy and behind me is my POS Kia Sportage I call Bubbles. <laughs> Now, if you've been following Bubbles' journey, you'll know that rather than a project vehicle, it has been a work in progress. It has issues, and one of the issues that we keep having is the uh, heater fuse under the hood keeps blowing. And this morning, as I was cleaning the snow off the vehicle, I could smell plastic burning, and as you can see right there, that fuse is in really, really rough shape. So there is something causing that fuse to get hot in those wires and melt that fuse. And when that fuse melts, I have no radio, I have no dash lights, and I have no uh, heater controls. So it's not that cold this morning. I think I'm gonna chance it and make it to work this morning without them. But it is a problem that we're gonna have to get fixed very, very soon because I don't wanna risk this thing burning on me, especially as close to the garage and where I keep my car. I'll start backing this thing in maybe. Or parking it where Junior parks his car. Anyways, uh, we'll just close the hood for now and uh, I'll get to work. And if I have some time this afternoon, we'll dive into it, see what we can find. So it is Sunday morning now and we are heading out to the shop. We're gonna hook the plow up to the plow truck and give the driveway a little scrape. Today is mild, it's uh, we had a little bit of snow last night, and so the best thing to do is to get that driveway scraped down so the sun has a chance to uh, melt it bare again. So that's what we're doing. Almost. Too much. They call these plows a minute mount plow, but I think they should be called a 10 minute mount. So we've got the plow all hooked up and I'm not gonna bother doing a time lapse of snow plowing because well, we've done that before. So we're gonna get this done and then we're gonna go inside and we're gonna talk about our hoists and some of the information that you might need to know to make a hoist selection for your garage. So as you can see, we got the driveway all scraped down and ready for Monday. And I guess they're calling for a pretty big storm on Tuesday into Wednesday, looking at almost what sounds like about 12 inches of snow. But we live in Canada, we have to expect snow in the wintertime. So as I said before we did our plowing is we were going to talk about our shop hoists or our lifts. And the reason why we're going to talk about them is because I had a follower from Instagram, Josh Smith, and I will put his Instagram information right up here if you want to go give him a follow. And Josh DM'd me and asked me about our hoist. What do we run? for hoists or lifts in our shop. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about that, uh, about the two different lifts that we have and the reasons why we went with each one. So this baseline scissor lift has a maximum capacity of 6,000 pounds or 2,722 kilograms. And the reason why we went with a scissor lift was when we first opened this shop, we only had the one lift and that's the blue one over here, which we'll talk about in a minute. And we needed the ability to act to have access to a second lift because sometimes a car would get tied up on the blue one 
and we would need to uh, to you know to get caught up or you know I've got two guys at work here my dad is a mechanic and my and my uh, mechanic Tim so those guys are constantly working on separate vehicles in a lot of cases so the second lift was a necessity and uh, we could only go with a scissor lift because the ceiling in the middle bay here is only 10 feet whereas over here on this bay we were able to stretch the uh, rafters out when we built the shop to accommodate the tall hoist so it's 12 feet over there and it's only 10 feet here but at the same time we wanted to make sure that we had a lift that had the capacity to lift pretty well anything that we could handle aside from pickup trucks this thing will lift just about anything the other thing, the reason why we went with this baseline from uh, or through uh, Napa, our local Napa Auto Parts here in St. Stephen, is because of the actual lift height. This was the tallest lift height lift that we could find at 48 inches from being on the ground to the actual bottom of the rail here. And the reason why we wanted that was because aside from Tim being short, sorry Tim, Dad and myself are quite tall, so having a vehicle up at this level when you're working on the brakes is an advantage. So we wanted to make sure that we could get the vehicle up as high as we can. So this one had a 48 inch lift and we can actually get a few extra inches out of it based on these extenders that we bought as a kit. So you have seen in the past where I have had to use this lift on my project bubbles and the reason for that is is because if I don't then when we go and lift this up then some of these arms right here will actually hit on the exhaust and I've actually done that once I've broken the exhaust on bubbles so that's where the either the uh, two and a half or the five and a half inch spacer comes into play so when we bought this thing also price point so we were trying to make sure that we got the highest lift and the best price that we could find and at the time Napa Auto Parts was able to supply us with this baseline 6,000 pound scissor lift. Now the price will vary depending on where you are and where it has to ship from. Now it comes with its own standalone motor and hydraulic fluid reservoir and everything is there. And if you notice right down at the bottom of this uh, dolly, it's got like a little hook. So what you can do with that hook is you can wheel this thing around and hook it into the little hole right there and move this around anywhere that you want. For us, this one stays stationary. We never have to move it, but if we ever had to get it out of the way for a different project, then we could just kind of hook onto it and be done with it. So as we go over to this blue lift, this one, uh, we put this in and we had it installed just at the same time we were building the new shop. We knew that we were gonna build this shop with a hoist, therefore the rafters, uh, we had this bay set at a 12 foot uh, in, in the trusses knowing that we only had enough space for one hoist so we thought we said well we're only going to do the 12 foot in this section and keep the rest of the building or the ceiling at 10 feet one thing you've got to remember when you're building a shop for yourself or for a business is you've got to heat that in the winter time and of course here in southern new brunswick um, we have you know roughly about five to six months of, of winter and most of that is extremely cold. So you've got to heat your building. We use oil uh, to heat out here and we used, uh, we used one of those mini splits out front to heat out there. So having a lower ceiling or as low as you can possibly go uh, before it becomes intrusive is key to making sure that when you go to heat, you're not spending thousands and thousands of dollars in heating fuel to heat your garage. Um, so therefore we only opted to go with the 12 foot section here as opposed to 12 feet the whole way across and uh, so that, that's one of the determining factors of why we only went with the 10 foot ceiling everywhere else uh, just trying to think ahead a little bit in small business you got to save everywhere you can so another area that we saved was in this quality lift i don't say quality just because it's a good quality lift but because that is the brand name of this lift now quality is a kind of an off brand of rotary and rotary is has been known for a long time as, as one of the name brands in lifts this particular lift is a 9,000 pound capacity so it can hold pretty well any truck that we throw at it we've had one ton Ford vans on it in the past and uh, you know big extended cabs crew cabs uh, you know stuff like that so it'll handle just about anything that we can throw at it so the reason why we went with quality was 
price point. We were looking for the maximum capacity lift that we felt would uh, suit our needs. So the 9,000 pound is what we went with. And the rotary or the quality brand lift was suiting our needs for that. We knew that we had to have a minimum of, um, I think it was 11 foot, 10 and a half inches. And when we built the trusses, we built the trusses at a 12 foot capacity thinking you know, for finishing, uh, we would be fine. And I can't, I can't very well show it to you, but if I can zoom in after the fact, I'll show you there's a little mark in the white ceiling over there where the two pistons come all the way up and actually touch and push on the metal ceiling a little tiny bit. By the time you add your strapping and then the corrugated metal, it brought that 12 foot clearance down uh, to just barely enough to fit this hoist in here. But up until now, we've never had an issue with it. Every year in Canada, you have to have your hoist inspected. Ours is due for an inspection and we get MJS Holdings out of Nova Scotia to come in and do that for us. And I know there's a couple of guys that follow me that work for MJS. That company will make, it, make their rounds in this area once a year and they'll always come in and they'll do a fresh inspection. If they find anything that needs to be repaired or uh, you know, fixed or adjusted, they'll do that for us uh, at that time and then we, we are certified for another year. Like the baseline, this particular hoist did not come with any extra lifts. Now these pads are adjustable. You spin them up and down depending on the height of the vehicle you're working on. But we did go and we bought the truck extenders. Sometimes what happens when you're dealing with you know, four wheel drive pickup trucks is you've got to get those arms up out of the way of things like running boards and side steps. So that's where the truck arms come into play. It gives you that extra start to the lift before the arms are resting on those rocker panels and or step boards. So with this rotary hoist, we bought that, it was six years ago, and I cannot for the life of me find the paperwork on how much we paid for it. I'm just going by memory, and if my memory serves me correctly, $4,000 installed is what this hoist cost. This hoist we bought through our local CarQuest, and uh, we just basically paid them, and one day it showed up, and about two or three days later, the crew from MJS Holdings came, and they set everything up for us golden. We didn't have to touch a thing. So I hope that this video gives you a little bit of insight on what we use for hoist and why we chose to use these particular brands. Everybody's needs are different. We wanted to go with something that we knew that we could have service locally. And I know there's cheaper hoists out there. You know, you go with your Benpak hoists, which are made in China, or you go with your Atlas hoists that are also made in China. And yeah, you could probably buy those for about you know a third the price less, or sometimes even half price. But I'm, I, when it comes to something that's going to hang a car over my head, I want to make sure that it is of the utmost quality standards. And I wasn't taking a chance with Benpack or Atlas. I know a lot of guys do. I'm not banging those, but we also wanted to support local. That's why we bought each of these hoists through our local auto parts dealers, and uh, they have looked after us as they do with everything uh, that we have. So Josh, I hope this answers any questions you may have had or, uh, or any inquiries and the reason why we go with these things. And uh, so I, I hope it helps somebody else out there too who's looking to you know, put together a, uh, you know, a hobby shop or maybe you're looking to go out on your own and, and start a, a business. And uh, now you, you have some insight to know what to look for uh, when it comes to buying hoist. So, uh, shop around, don't be afraid to ask questions and if you're anything like us, we try our very, very hardest to keep everything that we do local. That's why we support our local uh, Napa Auto Parts and our CarQuest Auto Parts because they are here, they employ people in this town, those people buy our vehicles as well. So we want to make sure that we are doing our part to help support them the way that they would support us when they are in need. So folks, remember that T-shirts and hoodies are on sale still at bonfire.com. The link will be in the description box below and you can get your very own hoodie or T-shirt that says old car auto guy across the front. Multiple colors and the prices are very, very reasonable. Also the contest for 1,000 subscribers is still going. We've got a few weeks left to reach 1,000 subscribers by January 31st and if we do and you're a subscriber, your name will go into a draw. 
for $1,000 cash, which is only about $750 American at today's prices. But still, it could be yours. So make sure you subscribe. And if, you're, uh, if you know some friends uh, that would be interested in this channel, don't be afraid to share it. Uh, that way, the name gets out there. The more subscribers that we get, uh, the better chances of me being able to give away that $1,000 cash. Now, guys, you know for a very long time I've been ending all of my videos with Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. And for 2019, I'm going to try and change it up a little bit. I want to try it and be a little bit inspiring to somebody who might be watching this. And the reason why I chose that particular quote from Colin Powell was simply for what it stands for. Everything that you've done in the past is exactly that. It's in the past. You can only move forward no matter what the situation is. And you have the ability to change that. So I felt that to be quite inspiring. Today we are going to finish this video off with that saying and hopefully within the next couple of weeks we'll have something just as inspirational uh, to you guys and, uh, and as well as to me. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.